George came quietly out of the brush. Oh, George! 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 What the hell are you yelling about? Are you gonna leave me, are you, George? I know you ain't. George came stiffly near and sat down beside him. No, I knowed it. You ain't that kind. George? Yeah? I done another bad thing. It don't make no difference. He fell silent again. Only the topmost ridges were in the sun now. The shadow in the valley was blue and soft. From the distance came the sound of men shouting to one another. George ah! turned his head and listened to the shouts. George? Yeah? Ain't you gonna give me hell? Give you hell? Sure, like you always done before. Like, if I didn't have you, I'd take my 50 bucks. Jesus Christ, Lenny. You can't remember nothing that happens, but you remember every word I say. Well, ain't you gonna say it? If I was alone, I could live so easy. His voice was monotonous. He had no emphasis. I could get a job and not have no mess. Go on. And when the end of the month come, and when the end of the month come, I could take my 50 bucks and go to a cat house. He stopped again. Lenny looked eagerly at him. Go on, George. Ain't you gonna give me no more help? No. Well, I can go away. I'll go right off in the hills and find a cave if you don't want me. No, I want you to stay with me here. Tell me like you done before. Tell you what? About the other guys and about us. Guys like us got no family. They make a little stick and then they blow it in. They ain't got nobody in the world that gives a hoot in hell about them. But not us. Tell about us now. But not us. Because, because I got you and I got you. We got each other. That's what, that gives, that gives a hoot in hell about us. The little evening breeze blew over the clearing and the leaves rustled and the wind waves flowed up the green pool. And the shouts of men sounded again. This time much closer than before. George took off his hat. Take off your hat, Lenny. The air feels fine. Lenny removed his hat dutifully and laid it on the ground in front of him. The shadow in the valley was bluer and the evening came fast. On the wind, the sound of crashing in the brush came to them. Tell how it's gonna be. George had been listening to the distant sounds. For a moment, he was businesslike. Look across the river, Lenny. And I'll tell you so you can almost see it. Lenny turned his head and looked off across the pool and up the darkening slopes of the gabolins. I'm gonna get a little place. He reached in his side pocket and brought out Carlson's Luger. Snapped off the safety and the gun lay in the ground behind Lenny's back. He looked at the back of Lenny's head, at the place where the spine and skull were joined. A man's voice called from up the river. And another man answered. Hey! Go on. George raised his gun and his hand shook, and he dropped his hand to the ground again. Go on. How's it gonna be? You're gonna get a little place. We'll have a cow, and we'll have maybe a pig and chickens. And down the fat, we'll have a little piece of alfalfa. For the rabbits! For the rabbits. And I get to tend the rabbits? And you get to tend the rabbits. And live on the fat of the land? Yes. Lenny turned his head. No, Lenny. Look down there across the river. Like you can almost see the place. Lenny obeyed him. George looked down at the gun. There were crashing footsteps in the brush now. George turned and looked toward them. Go on, George. When are we gonna do it? Gonna do it soon. Me and you. You and me. Everybody gonna be nice to you. Ain't no... Ain't gonna be no more trouble. Nobody gonna hurt nobody, nor steal from him. I thought you was mad at me, George. No. No, Lenny, I ain't mad. I never been mad, and I ain't now. That's the thing I want you to know. The voices came close now. <coughs> George listened to the voices. Let's do it now. Let's get that place now. Sure, right now. I got it. We got it. And George raised the gun and steadied it and he brought the muzzle of it close to the back of Lenny's head. The hand shook violently, but his face set and his hand steadied. He pulled the trigger. The crash of the shot rolled up the hills and rolled down again. Lenny jarred and then settled slowly forward to the sand, and he lay without quivering. George shivered and looked at the gun, and he threw it from him back up on the bank near the sand.